morning. I'm Mitch Ford, Senior Pastor here at Christian Valley. We are excited to have you join us for our online services today. If you're not in our area or if you just can't be in church this morning, we're glad you're here. We hope, though, that you won't use these online services as a substitute for being in God's house today. We, um, for the next hour or so, we're going to worship Jesus through singing and hearing God's word through prayer and the Lord's Supper. And we're also going to give as a part of our worship. So if you'd like to help us as a church, we offer three ways. In-house, online at, C- at christianvalleycc.org and on the Venmo app at CVCC Give. We hope you have a great day. We want you to like our our video this morning comment let us know who you are and who's watching and share if you have friends who need to hear about the, the good news of jesus christ have a great day
right. This is me, right? Okay, I couldn't remember which song. You guys can have a seat for just a second. How's that? I'm Mitch, I'm senior pastor here at Christian Valley. We're excited to see you here this morning. It is spring, spring break week, and uh, spring break, I know a lot of people kind of get uh, out and about and going places, and I'm excited to see you here with us today. If you're watching online, hi guys, we love y'all, and uh, we want you to know that uh, you're important to us, and so... Um, we want you to like our video or comment, that's even better, or share your, our video if you'd like uh, your friends to see it. So, um, we got a lot going on. It's a, a busy time, always is. We're finishing up a sermon series today, start a new one next week that will lead into Easter. Um, our sermon series right now is, is just about uh, uh, talking to your friends about Jesus. And that's important, we want you to do that. And with Easter coming up, we really want you to um, get out there and find somebody that you know that needs to be in church and, uh, and, and just invite them. Just, um, just tell them that, uh, that you love coming to Christian Valley and that you, we have a place um, for everybody. I want to tell you that this week, there's not going to be any Wednesday night service. It's spring break. Uh, typically, we take off uh, the week of spring break and just kind of regroup on our Wednesday nights, give you a rest, and so we'll be back a week from Wednesday night. We also want you to know that uh, um, if you've not been coming and, and um, participating in our, our uh, yoga on Saturday morning, man, it's a great time to start. Uh, next Saturday, 9.30, just jump in here and uh, be a part of that. We, um, we have something that, that we're planning up, Brandon is actually planning, for the week after Easter. It's uh, Friday night, April 22nd. Don't cringe when I say Friday night. It's Friday night. You know what? We're tired on Friday nights. We're going to come out. We're going to hang out at church. It's just a worship night. He's invited a lot of his friends from some ministries around uh, northeast Arkansas, and they're going to come in. So we're going to have some people here. We're going to have music and, um, and, and, and hear some, some testimonies. It's going to be a good night of revival here at Christian Valley, and we're excited. You'll hear a lot more about that. We also want to, uh, uh, oh, I wanted to ask you guys, and we've been asked, there's a church plant over in Marion, and, um, and they've been struggling a little bit. They, they're moving locations, and they've asked us to maybe help a little bit. And so next Saturday, I don't know the date, 26 maybe? We'll guess, 26. If it's not, somebody's going to tell me. It, whatever next Saturday is. If you'd like to ride to Marion and, and everything's furnished over there but, and just paint with me for a little while, um, some walls, they're supposed to have everything ready. I'm going to double check that. But if you're just interested, let me know today and I will, um, I'll tell them. We're just looking for four, five, six people. I don't know. We don't need too many to go over and, and do a little painting. So if you'd like to in on that, that's good. And the um, and last thing is this. Uh, Mary Grace is going to come up and tell you about something that we've got going on for Easter for your kids. And I just want you to know that we are, are getting ready to do a, a major focus on some children around here. Starting um, now, but obviously. But Easter, we're going to, if you're used to um, uh, the, our, the, our egg hunt, where we come in and hunt some eggs and give you pizza and, and tell you to come back tomorrow, we're going to do that a little differently this year. Mary Grace has some good ideas. I'm all for it. And uh, so it may be a little more of a program than what we've done, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. And um, she's going to tell you about it. First of all, what I want to say, we need eggs, okay? We need plastic eggs with candy in them, and, uh, and we're going to need several, a lot, okay? And so just bring your eggs in, put them out by the coffee area, and we'll get those piled up and ready. And so um, I'm going to let Mary Grace tell you what yeah there, see brandon brandon was supposed to do that part you can't count on that guy for you know no um but mary grace is going to tell you a little bit about what we've got going there um good morning how are y'all doing this morning um like he said i'm the children's director here if i haven't gotten a chance to meet you guys um it's a blessing to get to be uh, with your children every sunday and wednesday um and i if anybody's interested in volunteer volunteering we always need volunteers. Um, I've got a great group of women that help. Um, I'm very appreciative for them. They are pouring into your kids and teaching them about the gospel, teaching them about Jesus. Um, we've had several kids 
already just in the last six months get baptized and saved. Um, and so it's, that's just a blessing in itself. Um, but this year, instead of just an Easter egg hunt and leaving, I feel like uh, Jesus' death and resurrection is a little bit, calls for a little bit more than just an Easter egg hunt. Um, so we're doing an Easter celebration. Um, if you, when you leave today, out on the little desk out there, you're going to see a sheet that looks like this. I need volunteers to sign up for some stuff. This year, we're going to be doing the Easter egg hunt. We're going to have face painting. We're going to have a craft, a story, a bounce house. Someone's coming in and going to do snow cones for the kids. Um, we're going to serve hot dogs, chips. So I have a lot of stuff that I need volunteers just to sign up for. Um, I have, you know, a few slots on each thing. If it fills up, still sign up. Um, we can't have, you know, we can't have too many volunteers. Um, we're going to also be doing golden tickets. So there's going to be some golden tickets and some of the Easter eggs. So if your kid gets one, we're going to have a prize booth. They can come up and pick up something a little bit bigger than just candy. Um, we're going to have a photo booth. Like I said, we're going to do a story at the very beginning, just teaching kids what Easter's really about, not just Easter eggs. Um, and last, I am spending some time going around to some local businesses and getting some donations to put together a huge basket that we're going to do kind of as a raffle to raise money for our children's program. So starting this week in the church office, or you can reach out to Brandon, me, or Mitch, there's going to be tickets you can purchase for a dollar each. Dame will go in a drawing. You're going to win this big basket that's going to have all sorts of goodies um, from local businesses. Hopefully I'll have it put together this week and have it out on Sunday so you can kind of see what you're putting your money's worth into. But, like I said, all that money is going to go to our children's uh, ministry so that we can continue just to pour into your kids, continue to do some fun things for them. All right, that sounds like fun, huh? <laughs> I'm going to run out there real quick and sign up to be the one who passed out the candy. Yeah? All right, let's pray. Father God, it is a good day to be here in your house. We love to be here in worship. It's, uh, it's just uh, a, our best time of the week. It's uh, a time for us to recharge. And, um, and we want to do that spiritually this morning. We just want to bow before you and, uh, and realize that you're our God, that you love us. You love us enough to send your son Jesus. And so everything we do today is in your honor. And I, I pray today that it will bring you glory. God, we love you. We thank you for all you give us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Stand back up. Uh, it's bluegrass day here at uh, uh, Christian Valley. And, um, and so... If you like old songs, just sing right along. Would you be free from your birth?
all may be seated. Good morning. It's good to be here. And, and something about me, if you haven't figured out, if you've listened to even one of my sermons, I am never ashamed. I have no closed doors. So any anything that's on my heart or anything that's that's usually bothering me, I will communicate that in a sermon. And I'm very open about that stuff. And, and, and what I'm about to tell you is uh, a couple weeks ago, this season of, of COVID, and I know we're on the backstretch of it, right? But there's a there's been a lot of struggle and there's been a lot of, of striving and in the last couple weeks, and, and, and I'm out of the season now, but the last couple weeks, I was really, really frustrated. You know, ministry is, ministry is difficult already. And, and pray for your pastors right off the top. Pray for me. Pray for Mitch. Pray for the leadership of our church. But, but there was a day in my office, and the enemy, I'll tell you, the enemy was working on me in such a way that I was even uh, questioning my, my abilities, my capabilities in, in ministry, and the enemy was just, you know, are you cut out for ministry? Are you this? Are you that? Or, and and I, I started to, to, I'm man enough to admit that I, st- I was upset. I was highly upset sitting in my office at the church, and I was upset because, honestly, I took my eyes off of Jesus. I took my eyes off of the source, the God who's blessed me with with unbelievable blessings I took my eye off of him because of all the noise because of everything else we don't have the budget we don't have this we don't have that and and I I forgot to to keep my eyes on him and and he works in his own ways his ways are higher than ours he always will and I had to go back and, and if you're ever feeling down if you're ever feeling depressed anxious fearful whatever it is Read Revelation 21, 4, and it says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And I read that verse. I have to, I have to go back to that verse because I will get overwhelmed with, with everything else going on around me. And I read that verse, and, and a, this kind of peace came over me. And what it reminded me of is the disciples because, you know, the disciples were on earth and and there was Jesus and there was movement and people were getting healed and people were getting saved. And then Jesus was crucified and the disciples were standing around wondering, what now? They were worried about everything else, all the the noise going around. And then the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit fell and and, and the world changed from these, these apostles. And I had to read that verse, and there's a verse in Philippians 4, 7. It says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So what am I getting at here with with all this? Amidst the noise, amidst the the struggles, the, the anxiety, the fear, whatever you have that's going on outside of these walls right now, what I'm telling you is to get your eyes back on Jesus. It, it, there's always going to be noise. You're going to walk out this door. Maybe right now in your pocket your phone's going to ring or it's going to have a notification. Something to grab your, your attention away from him. That's not where we want to be. He always wants our eyes on him. He always wants our focus on him. And, and whenever my eyes are on him, I, I have peace. I have so much peace. I don't worry about much of anything else because I know where, whose I am. I know whose I am. And whenever I read that verse, it, it, it rooted me back that I am owned. I was bought with a price. So if you're, if you're not peaceful, if there is noise in your life today, right now, today is the day to put your eyes fixed firmly, squarely on your Savior, your God. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, uh, Father, we come here today... Um, to to worship your name. We come here to experience the Holy Spirit, but God, we just want to worship you, and Father, we want to be close to you. That's what my heart longs for, is just to be so close to you, Father, that I'm so close to you that I can't even feel the storms going on around me. And God, I think that there may be someone here today that that is in a storm, or, or a storm's coming, or a storm just passed, and Father, their eyes are all over the place, and Father, I pray that we put our eyes squarely, firmly back on you. Um, God, we need you in our lives. I pray for peace upon our people, upon our congregation, our families. Um, There's a lot of uncertainty going on. But, Father, we love you and we thank you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There are stations around the the sanctuary. We we practice open communion for baptized believers. So there are stations around here. So uh, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, guys. As um, Mary Grace was talking about, we're gonna <clears throat> we're really getting ready to um, put a focus on some some kids here. Day before Easter, sixteenth uh, of April, we're gonna have a, a big celebration here as far as our egg hunt goes. Be a little different this time. It's gonna be fun, and uh, we're excited about that. And then in the summer, we're gonna do some things that um, that maybe a little differently than we've done and uh, the focus is all going to be on our children and our teens and so um, uh, this summer um, we're not going to be doing our adult Bible study the way we've done we'll do a couple of special events in the past we, we've all uh, several pa past several years we've taken our summer off on our adult Bible study and, um, and you know one of the things that we've kind of noticed is that um, we have a lot of a lot of kids here for our BBS in the summer and and we want to expound on that so we're going to have about six vbs's this summer just a, a wednesday night about six times during the summer that we're gonna we're just gonna do a, a program we're gonna have a craft and, and a snack and and something special and 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 teach these kids a lesson and play some games and it's going to be a a fun time and we're going to do that or work it around our camp schedule. We will have you by Easter, on Easter Sunday, we're going to be able to hand you a schedule of our summer events, okay? And so we want you to, to make plans to be here with us. We want you to uh, bring your children. Um, I know that there's a lot of things going on in, in, uh, in their lives and in your lives, and I can't think of anything more important than, than introducing them to Jesus. And so, um, so that's something we, we're going to make a commitment on. And something we're going to ask you to make a commitment on. So kids, y'all can head back to the treehouse now. Mary Grace will be back there, and uh, they're going to they're going to um, learn they're going to learn today. We love that the fact that they can go back there and and just be a part of uh, learning about Jesus here at Christian Valley. I was, um, in my first ministry, we lived out in, um, in a rural area here in, in Craighead County, and, and, um, and the, the, the house in which we lived was located across the parking lot from the church. I mean, close enough, in fact, that the church office phone rang in our house, and in the world of telemarketers, that is not a good idea, okay? I promise you. Um, we lived there, and, and, um, and there, it was always, uh, if somebody needed in the church, wanted something from church, we lived right beside it, so we'd go over and help them out. But, um, but one day something happened that kind of took me off guard. It was a little different. Um, uh, there was a knock on the door, and, um, and like everybody, um, well, I guess these days you look at your security camera, but uh, back in those days you looked out the blind, right? And I would go to visit somebody, and... and he, see somebody look out the blinds and um and so i did and there were two ladies standing there uh seemed like harmless and uh so i went to the door to see what i could do to help them out and um they were holding some literature and i opened the door holding literature and they said hey could could we come in and talk to you about jesus and i said oh that's that's awesome but i said you see that church right over there i said that's that's where I, that's where i work I'm the preacher there, and um, and so 
this awkward little silence and they looked at each other and they looked at me and I looked at them and finally one of them said can we come in and tell you about Jesus and I thought no hold it <laughs> wait just a second I tell people about Jesus no and I really I was bold enough to do that I'm serious I wish that, that I was bold enough to just uh, and, and back when I started preaching you went and knocked on doors it, it's it's very ineffective these days but but back in those days you knocked on doors and you just told people about Jesus and and there are many times like a, a like a vacuum cleaner salesman that that uh, you, you might ask somebody do you, do you want to hear about this and they say no and what do you do you take no for an answer and I and I just pray that I'm bold enough these days when somebody says no I really don't want to hear about Jesus to just ask them again okay are you sure I can tell you about my Jesus and and, uh, and that's what this series has all been about it's called open the door first week we talked about uh, a man who was paralyzed couldn't walk his buddies loaded him up on a, a mat they carried him to they heard Jesus was in town uh, they they <laughs> excuse me they brought him to Jesus but the crowds were so large they couldn't get up to even get close to Jesus so they took him up on a, a roof pulled away the, the, the tile roofing and lowered this man, their buddy, down to the feet of Jesus. The next week we heard about a sinful woman. I'm not judging. The Bible tells us. Jesus knew her, knew her background. He said, hey, go get your husband. She said, I'm not married. He said, I know, you've been married five times and you're living with a guy. Boom, boing. She heard all the sound effects right there. But... Um, she was so impressed with what he said and his love and his compassion, the mercy he had on her, that she ran to town, got her friends, and brought them to Jesus. She said, you have got to come and hear about this man. He, he knows all my past, uh, the Messiah. I know this is the guy. Come and hear about my Jesus. Today we're going to talk about a parable that Jesus told, a story. It was a, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning a parable uh, that Jesus told about a man who wanted to invite his friends to a banquet okay and and we're gonna take tear this apart a little bit today but um, but this is a story that uh, is all about opening doors it's all about uh, asking people to, to come and hear about Jesus it's about the kingdom of heaven it's it's a kingdom parable it's something we can apply to our lives that's what we're gonna do today we're going to talk about opening doors because I'm just going to tell you, we can plan all the events. We can, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. We can do all the things and make all the preparations. But unless you go out and invite your friends to come and hear about Jesus and tell them about your church, and, and, and unless you are willing and bold enough to ask somebody, can I tell you about Jesus, even if they say not really, then, then, then we're not really getting the point of what Jesus was talking about, and we're not uh, following the example of these friends that we see in the Scripture, and we're not following the lead of this woman who said, hey, I may be sinful, but I want to tell you about somebody I met. Now, to set the scene, we're going to be reading out of Luke chapter 14 today. If you want to uh, turn ahead to where we're going to be reading, your uh, outline should be there in the bulletin. If, um, if you want to, to read on your phone, your tablet, we love that. If you're watching online, there's going to be the scripture right there on your screen. And so um, you can read along with that. But we love to hear those Bibles turning pages. So if you want to turn ahead to Luke chapter 14, that's where we're going to be reading today. Now, in this, uh, to set the scene a little bit, Jesus and his followers are heading back to Jerusalem. And... Um, and it was a, a crazy time. It was uh, near the Passover celebration. That's what they were heading there for. His friends thought, wow, we're going to go, and it's going to be a party time. There's going to be a big crowd. It's going to be great. We, um, you know, we've got all the reservations. We've got all, everything set up, and, um, and, and this is going to be a fun week. Jesus knew better. He knew that this would be his last trip ever to Jerusalem. And so he was teaching, he was uh, meeting a lot of people, he was healing people, he was doing all kinds of things that Jesus did. 
large crowd followed him. He was at the height of his popularity. Um, everything was great except for one little thing going on over here. The religious leaders were tired of the message that Jesus preached, and they didn't want to hear it anymore. They had plotted and decided that uh, we've got to find a way to uh, get rid of this guy, and um, even if that means we're going we're gonna to hang him on a cross, we're going to do something, we've got to get rid of him, okay? And so when we get to Luke 14 here, we find Jesus in this awkward situation. He's at a dinner uh, with some religious leaders. This was a prominent man who had uh, hosted a dinner and invited Jesus and his followers, I guess. And, and you know, Jesus knew before he got there why he was there. But basically, they just invited him to ask him some trick questions to try to trap him or maybe try to even get him to say something that they could hold against him later. And so here Jesus was in the home of this prominent Pharisee, little awkward, and so what did he do? He did what he always did. He didn't just enjoy the food and go along and have fun. Jesus used it as a teaching moment and he taught about uh, their traditional laws and the way they loved to do the, the, the way things had always been done was the way they wanted to do it and he said I'm different we're going to do things different he talked about pride and humility which stepped on their toes he said hey you when you have a party when you have a banquet don't just invite people like you because if you invite somebody just so they'll invite you to their banquet you really didn't do anything anyway and so there was this little moment of silence, and one of the guests decided to, to break the silence. He needed to say something. He wanted to say something that would really sound um, spiritual and sound like he was wise. And so in verse 15 of chapter 14, Luke 14, 15, we read this. When one of those at the table with him heard this, heard that, you know, invite people that, that you don't know to your your banquets he said to Jesus blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God and I'm sure when he said that he leaned back and grinned and, and all the guys patted him on the shoulder and thought wow that is great words there buddy but not Jesus see Jesus used this man's words here to segue into a parable about a fancy banquet that a master was holding so today what I want to do is just read through this and see what lessons we can learn from it first lesson you are invited to the party okay you're invited and um, and you say well I didn't know there was gonna be a party what was this about a banquet we don't know uh, what is it well we're gonna tell you that you are invited to Jesus party but I mean do you even like parties you might, I might say that, you say, I say, well, you're invited to the banquet, you're invited to the party, you may say, oh, oh okay, because I think it's this age thing, and it gets to where we are in life, and, and, uh, and you may say, well, I'm, I'm not really even sure I want to go to the party. But if you went back to the, the tree house back here where the kids are, you, uh, you say, hey, y'all want to go to a party? Yeah, they want to go to a party. They want to go to a birthday party. Yeah, that's fun. They want to go to a party at the... Uh, at the, the bowling lanes, they want to go to a party at the, the trampoline park or Chuck E. Cheese. They love parties. They have parties at schools. They, ha they have parties with their friends. They have parties everywhere. And they love parties. And then we look at a party and say, wow, hold it. I'm tired. It costs money. I just wanted to, to relax a little bit. I, I don't want to go to another party. And that's, and that's kind of where we are with it. So kind of take those thoughts out of your mind right now and just kind of put yourself in this situation and think I, yes I want to be a part of this Jesus banquet that we're gonna read about here let's read it verse 16 Jesus replied a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests at the time of the banquet he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited come for everything is ready let me just tell you real quick what's going on here but at the time, first century, the, the custom was uh, the, the banquet was planned, okay? A guy says, hey, I haven't had a banquet in a while. Let's have a banquet. You know, I, we need to have a banquet. Everybody needs to come see my house, see what I've been doing. Did a little redecorating here, you know. Got new servants. I want to show all everything off a little bit. I, let's have a party. And so they might set a party up for this time next year. I'm going to have next March 
uh, 20th. I'm going to have a party, okay? And so basically the servant would go out and tell uh, a, a list of, of guests, hey, my master's going to have a party next year uh, on March 20th. Would you like to come? And for everybody who says yes, that's kind of like a, a, a save the date, right? They see, he, he goes out and does this save the date thing, and then they RSVP. I'll be, here. I'll be glad to come. Love to come to his party. All right. And so, and so on, he, he kind of makes preparations. He uh, thinks about it. He gets, um, he gets everything ready. And so they know the date of the party, but they don't know the time of the party. And that's intentional. That was customary. They wouldn't know the time of the party because uh, they had to, uh, the day of the party, they had to get everything ready. We got to get the food ready. We got to get tables ready. We got to get all the servants ready. We got to get all, everything ready to drink. It's all, everything's got to be made ready. And so when it's all ready, he would send his servants back out with the same list. And he would run up, knock on the door. Hey, party's ready. Let's go. Yeah, let's have some fun tonight. All right, we're going to go. And so that's kind of the way this thing worked. And so the banquet's ready, the party's ready, uh, the, the guests have been invited, everything's just right, it gets time, he tells his, his uh, servant, go out and tell everybody that RSVP, come on down, the, the food's, the table's full of food, we got everything ready to drink, the band's going to play, it's all good. And you know, I think about what we do here at, at Christian Valley. You see, a big part of what we do is, is I would say, marketing we we uh we try to find all kinds of creative ways to invite people to come out <clears throat> i think we're in the invitation business but we've also got to keep our eyes on the prize this is not about us it's not about this building it's not about uh the band it's not about anything we do here it's all about jesus okay so we're keeping our eyes on the prize but we're inviting these people to the banquet we we have our purpose statement that's what uh, everything we do we've got to go along with that purpose statement and our purpose statement hinges on three things uh, love um, hope and family the love of Jesus the hope of Jesus and we want to be a family church and so we're gonna plan things like this children's uh, event uh, before Easter the day before Easter we're gonna plan things for the summer for our children our teens we want our teens to be involved and and now that uh, we're kind of getting back to some sort of normalcy we, we've got to refocus on where we were before the pandemic and so um and so that's where we are and that's what we're kind of doing here and, and you kind of see this all starting to take place and we invite these people we want everyone to know you are invited to the banquet that we have here and we have this banquet every sunday and we have special event banquets and we have all these banquets but it's a jesus banquet it's not a us banquet everyone is invited you know, um, 25 years ago when I was uh, painting signs for a living, I, did, I painted a lot of church signs. It was back before social media was as big and there were no electronic church signs. Everybody just had a sign out front, you know? Uh, the, the fancy churches had those where you could take the letters off and put new letters on, you know? And they'd put these snappy sayings on there and everybody would chuckle about them when they drove by. But, but most churches just had a sign out front. And I painted a lot of those signs. And you know two, th two words that were on nearly every church sign that I ever painted? Everyone invited. Okay? And, and, and that's pretty important. You want everybody to know you're invited. And I always thought, well, it must be a must. I wasn't uh, uh, like a, a, a requirement. I wasn't in the church business then. I, I didn't know. I thought it must be a requirement. You have to put everybody, everyone is invited on your church sign. Like maybe some... Somebody that never went to church got up one Sunday morning and dad says, hey, let's all go to church. And so they find their best clothes and they get all cleaned up and they get the, car, uh, get the kids strapped in the car and they drive down and they say, you know, let's go to this church down here. And they drive up in the parking lot, but the sign doesn't say everyone invited. And they say, oh, well, we tried. You know, I don't know what to do now. We can't go to church because we're not invited. I don't know. I never understood that part. But I think it's very important for us and I think it's very, to, to go along with this parable, I think it's very important for us to know that the invitation is out there. And so that's your job. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to get out of work here. And I'm not telling you that, that Brandon and I don't invite people and we don't go out and, and, and try to show Jesus love to everybody. But I'm just telling you, this is not, it's like I said last time, 
building the kingdom of God and building the church is not addition, it's multiplication, okay? We're going to multiply here, and, um, and you're going to go out and, and tell your friends and, and, uh, and, 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 then, and then the ones who are needing to see Jesus are going to be interested. And so first thing, you, you, I want you to know that you are invited to the party. But that means that you've got to go invite other people, okay? Second thing is this. A frequent, a frequent response to an invitation is, is an excuse, all right? And excuses are everywhere. We all hear excuses. Uh, in fact, you know, um, um, the last couple of weeks, there, there's been these two really crazy good excuses. Actually, popular, not good. Popular excuses, uh, time change. You know, oh, oh, we missed it. Time change, and then spring break. And um, and you know, what what we learn is is that when we talk to somebody about uh, uh, coming and hearing about Jesus, coming, you know, uh, we have quality music and um, and 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 we're friendly people and and mediocre preaching, <laughs> but uh, but you know, we we love to see you here, and 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 everybody has an excuse. But you know, they're not good excuses, are they? I mean, think, of, okay, let's be honest, they're not really good excuses. What's the best excuse you ever heard? Huh? I was just thinking about that this week. What's the best excuse that somebody's ever told you? And, and when you break it down like that, maybe somebody will say, well, yeah, you know that, ooh, hold it, that's a pretty good one. And, and you got, really have to admire a good excuse. Because in the world of poor excuse, excuses, <laughs> you know, you hear a good one every now and then, you say, wow, I can't argue with that. Back when I was coaching uh, baseball, um, I was coaching third base, and and, um, and 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 this kid, he's 11th grader, and he hit one, and, and we had runners on base. It was a big game. We needed to score. He hit one that went between the gap between the uh, right field and center field. It rolled all the way to the wall, and, man, I got I got guys running, and, and this is why my shoulders hurt today. I, you know, I was doing, looking over there like this thing, and, and here came a runner, here came a runner, and my, my batter, he rounded first, and he went to second, and I'm telling him, come on, come on, and, and I think he can make it home, and I'm, I'm telling him, go home, go home, and he just rolled into third base and just stopped like this. And I said, uh, you know, I got down here with him. He's like there. I'm like, yeah. I said, hey, what, what are you doing, man? You could have scored. He said, coach, coach, I got to quit them cigarettes. That was, an excuse. that was an excuse. It wasn't a good one, but it was an excuse, like, you know. Honest. Sometimes I worry about even our honesty doesn't hold water when it comes to Jesus. Let's read on verse 18. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. Well, you see, the guest had accepted the invitation to the party. Oh, a year ago, they said, yeah, I'd love to come. Yeah, save me a chair. I, I don't want to be there. But when his master sent out this, this same list to, to go to these people and say, hey, it's time for the banquet, well, a lot of them, made excuses they didn't want to attend they said well something's come up between uh when i said i would and and now and you know i hate it man but man you know i can't come now notice these three excuses and notice that they fit into three categories and notice that those three categories might be uh categories we lean on sometimes for excuses ourselves the first one was a possession First category was a possession. Oh, hey, man, I'd love to come, but you know what? I just bought a field out here. You know, I just bought some property, and, and I really want to go check it out. Too bad that uh, your banquet's today because I was just getting ready to go out here and look at a field I bought. 
You know, in today's world with technology, I think it might be possible that you would buy some, a, a piece of property without seeing it. Maybe you saw a video online or you looked at a bunch of pictures. But, you know, it kind of seems odd to me in the first century that somebody would spend a lot of money on property they'd never seen before. Possessions get in the way of our commitments. Worldly things get in the way of heavenly things. And so the first one's possession. The second one was work. And work's good, all right? This one seems a little better than the first one because he said, you know what? I just bought these, this, this, uh, these oxen here, these five yoke of oxen, and we know that they're not going to be like pulling a wagon for him to go for a pleasure ride on. He, he bought these dudes for work, okay? And, um, and he says, you know what? I, I was just going to go out this afternoon and give them a little test spin, you know? And so... Uh, man, I'd love to, but, you know, work gets in the way, and work's a good thing, and I've got to make a living for my family, and, and that servant just stood there thinking, well, hold it, you said you would come to our banquet, and I've got to go back and tell my master now, and he's not going to be excited about this. Sorry about that, man, uh, next time, next year, okay? This guy was obviously a farmer. Maybe he was going to uh, start his planting season here uh, in, a, in a, a, a short time, and he wanted to make sure his, his yoke, uh, his oxen yoked together would be able to pull a plow, and, and it was an excuse. So first you had possessions, third, uh, second you had uh, work, and third here we have relationships, okay? Relationships, sometimes we use that for an excuse. <clears throat> Oh, is that today? Is your banquet today? I'm sorry, I just got married. Whew, can't go. Uh, we're honeymooning. Yep, can't go. We just got married. Uh, um, man, sorry about that. Maybe next time. You know, this is a lame excuse. It really is. First two were lame. This one's lame. Weddings at the time followed a, about a year-long um, um, engagement process, okay? And it was a it, it was a really complicated thing, but basically the groom might live with uh, the bride in the house, uh, with the in-laws or future in-laws, or maybe the opposite way around, but they basically got to know each other really well before the wedding actually took place, and so they would have known a long time ahead, we're getting married on this day, and we know, oh, oh here's this banquet on this day, and I find it kind of odd, and I think the, the audience that Jesus was talking to here would find it odd that this guy would have said, yeah, I'll come to your, your banquet that day, when he knew he was getting married right then. And so, um, and so while this may in our world seem like a noble excuse, it was an excuse, Okay. And, um, and by itself, it might have not been that big a deal. He might have, the servant might have been able to say, well, everybody's here except uh, this one guy over here, and he just got married. And the, and the master might have said, okay, well, that's not bad. But when you add it to all these other excuses, it just kind of piles on, and then all of a sudden, it, it looks watered down. Matthew 13, 7 says, other seed fell upon thorns. He's talking, Jesus was talking here about uh, seed that was, was sown and it says some of the seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants and that's what we do we live in a world that will choke out the word of God and it will choke out your time for God and it will choke out anything that you let it do if you let these thorns grow and that's our problem is we don't nip these thorns in the bud when they are very small we let them grow we think it's okay they just hang around over here because they're not going to bother anything and you know what they bother things they get in the way they choke things out and we let worldly things choke out what really matters most and I can't tell you enough I know I talk about it a lot but I can't tell you enough that the top, the clock is ticking and your friends are out here your neighbors are out here and your family is out here and you are out here and if we don't heed the advice of Jesus that he is coming back soon we're all gonna pay for it and the door to the banquet is gonna be closed and we're not gonna be inside and so ask yourself this morning, what good things are choking out your spiritual desire to be at a Jesus banquet? See, we're full of valid excuses, but I just want to ask you, is valid good enough? I think we're conditioned sometimes to the word excused absence. Ever heard that? If you had children in school, you know what that means. If you had events, you know, uh, oh, uh, this is required by 
all our employees well I need an excused absence we know what that is we know what that means you're not going to find anywhere in the scripture where Jesus says hey I need you to be at my kingdom banquet unless you have an excused absence because he has got to be number one he is the most important and until we decide that's right and good and true then we're just making excuses last thing there's still room at the party okay and that's good news there is still room at the party this master was very angry I just see his servant came back and said okay uh, so folks are coming good news folks are coming bad news a bunch of people said they couldn't make it okay and I've got a list here of why they can't be here and I'm so and he maybe even handed his master that list and his master took that list and wadded it up and threw it on the ground he didn't go for he, he would not settle for a crummy party he didn't want empty seats at his party he had everything in there ready he said I want this thing to be perfect and so here's what he said, verse 21. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. That was a little shot to the Jews there. They, climbed, they, they loved to think that they were chosen above all else. He said, you were invited and you chose not to come. And so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out and I'm going to get people. I love the way he says compel. The master told the servant, go out, and I want you to invite anybody you see. And, and this was so crazy. In this uh, culture, in this world, only the, the rich and famous got invited to, to fancy banquets. He said, I want you to go out. I don't care who they are. I, you, I don't care. Dirty. I don't, it doesn't matter where you're from. I don't care. You bring them. Bring their kids. Bring their, we'll have nursery, you know. Uh, we don't, I don't care. I want my seats full. And so the servant went out, and it even looks again like he's a little unsuccessful here. He says, you know what? I went out and invited some people, and we still don't have that many. And the master said, go out again. Go different places. Go way out in the sticks this time, and just keep inviting folks until somebody comes. He said, I am eager to have a banquet. And I love the way he says, compel people to come in. When's the last time you tried to compel someone to come? And I'm talking about myself. When is the last time that you've tried to convince or compel somebody to come to the kingdom? So let's back up right quick. Verse 15, where we started. This man leaned back and threw some wise words on him. Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the banquet. Man, we want to have, I want to be in the kingdom of God. Yeah. This guy wasn't making excuses, was he? You know what his problem was? His problem was that he assumed that he would be there. His problem was that he would assume that, uh, that, that, uh, that Jesus uh, understood his heart, you know? Jesus did know his heart. Jesus knows our hearts. This man was entitled. He was arrogant. He was probably lazy and content. He wasn't out inviting people to a banquet because he thought he was already there. I know life gets in the way. Plans change. Priorities change. Too many people are, are not going to be inv invited when it gets time for the banquet. And that's a shame. I got an email this week that, uh, or text, I believe, that just had this message. It was a shared message. It says this, Before you complain about not being fed, Remember how often you didn't come to the table. You can't be unfaithful and then complain that you didn't get anything to eat. You know, it doesn't do any good to, to be invited if you don't attend. That saved the date that's hanging on your refrigerator now. It's not doing you any good if you don't look at the date. Put it in your calendar and make a commitment to go. 
knocked my water over. I'll clean it up later. Revelation 19.9 says, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. I'm excited that we've been invited. And I'm excited that you have made the commitment to attend. There's still room at the party for you. There's still room at the party for people you know. We're entering a a really special time here in Easter season. Getting ready to start a new sermon series next week. I'm excited about it. We're going to look at the life of Peter, and we're going to talk about some of the good things he did, some of the bad things he did. We're going to see that uh, that he was uh, right there at the tomb when they realized that Jesus wasn't there. And it's time to fill up some seats here at Christian Valley. You know, in our elders meeting last week, we were talking about um, about how it's it's um, a little different than it was a couple of years ago, no doubt. Two years ago, what, this week, our world changed. We look at things differently now, don't we? And in that time, we've had a lot of people who uh, we used to know, we used to love to see every Sunday, and, and unfortunately, we don't see them anymore. Life has changed. Priorities have changed. I've said this a couple of times, or well, once during the pandemic, and I really believe this, God prunes uh, dead fruit off the tree to help the tree. And so now it's time for our tree to grow again. And, um, and so instead of waiting on people to come back, we have got to focus all our efforts on rebuilding. And I'm excited about that. You know what? We need a revival in this church. We need a revival in the kingdom of God. We need a revival in this city, and it's time we can start here. I'm good with it. And I love what uh, I think it was Joe said. He said, you know what? We haven't met the future of our church. And that's right. But you have. You see, your friends are the future of our church. Your, uh, your, your family is the future of our church. Your neighbors are the future of our church. Your co-workers are the future of our church. And the good news is we've got plenty of seats available. And so, I want to ask you this morning, and, and I just want to, I want to just, just pin you down on this a little bit. I want you to think about, about somebody in your circle. <clears throat> I want you to think about somebody in your world that you know that needs to hear about Jesus. And I'm not asking you to go uh, stand at their door and, and ask them, can I come in and talk to you about Jesus? I know that would be a little awkward and a little scary. But I'm asking you to send them a text. Hey, you want to you want to come to church with me? I want you to uh, to just stick their head, stick their your head in the door of, of their office and uh, or or maybe walk down the hall at work and say, Hey, you ought to come see what we're doing at Christian Valley. I want you to walk across the street and talk to your neighbor in the yard and say, Hey. You know what? I've been thinking about you, and I just wanted to invite you to, to church. I want, let's let's um, let, let, just go hear about Jesus with me. The person sitting beside you at the ball game, hmm? concert, the pageant, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. The woman in line behind you at the grocery store that looks stressed out. You know what? Just say, hey, if you wanna if you wanna hear about peace. Come and hear about Jesus. Right now in Craighead County, the last uh, stats I heard was that 26%, <coughs> excuse me, 26% of all people in Craighead County attend church uh, twice a month. One-fourth of the people in Craighead County attend church twice a month. And so don't tell me there aren't people out there who need to hear about the banquet that the master is going to throw. And this banquet is going to be good. It's going to be something that we've never seen before. 
Uh, Jesus is there preparing for us now a place for us to go to be a part of this banquet. So what's our takeaway today? As long as we're afraid or are hesitant to open the doors of opportunity that God puts in front of us, we're never going to expand the kingdom. And we're never going to please the master of the banquet. So Easter is, is uh, April 17th this year. And we're going to have a, a great time. Uh, oh, it'll be what we do, and we're going to see a lot of people who are dressed up. And, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to see some people maybe we haven't seen in a, a good while. I hope so. New people. I love to just meet new families. But the only way we're going to do that is for you to go out and open some doors. Good news is this. You've been invited to the banquet that Jesus is going to throw. Don't make excuses. And the better news is there's still room at the party. So if you don't feel like you've uh, RSVP'd, if you don't feel like you've, you've uh, lived up to your part of the deal, let's talk about it. Let's pray about it this morning. Stand with me. Let's sing. And if you need to make a decision, let's do it today. has been brought to you by Goo Goo Clusters, right? Huh? Yeah. No, thank you. Brandon, we have any prayer cards today? No? Okay. Um, want to uh, thank you for being here. Uh, just excited to see you this morning. Excited just to, to preach to you about Jesus. Um, I want to challenge you, okay? And, um, and I mean this. I, 
you know, I've thought about maybe putting in the, during this series, I thought about putting a, 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 like a question in the bulletin, who can I invite to church and put a blank out there? And I thought, you know what? We don't have to do that. You know somebody right now that needs to know Jesus. And so I hope you'll accept this challenge. Talk to somebody you know and have the, the just pray, God, give me the courage, give me the words. And you know what, God? I, give me the peace that, um, that I'm going to do the right thing for you. And you'll be surprised what you can do when you go out and just tell other people about what's going in, uh, on here at Christian Valley and going on in our city and going on in the kingdom of God. Got a lot going on. We're going to be telling you a whole lot about some events coming up. And uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, if you have, uh, we don't have any, any prayer requests turned down this morning. But uh, if you have anything that you want us to pray about, talk to me, talk to Brandon, uh, text us, send us a message. And, um, and, and we want to pray for you for sure. All right? Um, hope you have a great week. We won't be here on Wednesday night, but um, hope you enjoy your week. And, um, and we want to hear, see you here next Sunday as we start this uh, brand new sermon series. All right. I will, uh, uh, looks like Steve is, is out working security today. So how about I close this with prayer? Father God, we uh, thank you for a good day for uh, all you give us uh, you do give us uh, more than we deserve and we thank you for that God I know that uh, that we're supposed to be workers in your kingdom we're, we're your hands and feet and so um, uh, allow us today to go out and tell other people the, the hope and the love and the family we've found here at Christian Valley but bigger than that let let us have the, the, the urgency tell other people about your kingdom and the fact that Jesus is going to come back and, and take us with him and, and we're looking forward to, uh, to a better day like that for sure be with us in, um, in all our plans and all the events that we're planning here that we can reach out be an outreach to other people um, allow us to, to do that and, um, and God just uh, watch over us now as we go out in this world help us to, to overcome evil things around us help us to uh to be a shining light and a beacon to the people that uh, we come into contact with and help us god to spread the message of jesus christ we lift up all these things in his name